Greetings and welcome to part 5 of the O-Level Trigonometry series and today we will be looking at the cosine rule. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to apply the cosine rule to find the unknown lengths and unknown angles for given triangles, as well as to be able to know when to apply each of the rules that we've covered thus far. I will end off this lesson with a summary of all the rules. Let's begin today with the proof for the cosine rule. I have here triangle ABC where side A is opposite angle A, side B opposite angle B, and side C opposite angle C. Let's clear this out of the way and drop a perpendicular from B to AC and label it point P. This makes BP the height H and it divides the triangle into two right-angled triangles. Next, I'm going to let the length of AP equals to X. That will divide the base of this triangle into two parts. AP equals to X and PC equals to B minus X. Now that I have all three sides of both right-angled triangles, I can perform Pythagoras' theorem. This will give me X squared plus H squared equals to C squared as well as b minus x whole thing squared plus h squared equals to a squared. And for this second application of Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to expand and get b squared minus 2bx plus x squared plus h squared equals to a squared. Notice that x squared plus h squared is common in both sets of equations. This allows me to perform a substitution, giving me b squared minus 2bx plus c squared equals to a squared. Now, to get rid of the x, I can look at the triangle ABP. Notice that cosine of angle A is equals to adjacent x divided by hypotenuse c. By making x the subject, I can substitute away the x from the Pythagoras equation to get b squared minus 2bc cosine a plus c squared equals to a squared. Now let's return to the original triangle that we started off with. By rearranging the terms in this equation, we are now able to derive the cosine rule. The cosine rule states that a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a where A is the included angle between site B and site C. Alternatively, I can make B squared the subject, and that will be equals to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B, where B is the included angle between site A and site C. Lastly, I could have made C squared the subject. These are all three variations of the cosine rule. We have now come to checkpoint 1. Find the lengths of x and y in the two given triangles. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through part 1. In this question, we are able to apply the cosine rule. This is because we have the two sides, 5cm and 6cm, as well as the angle in between, 71 degrees. Since the unknown side x is opposite the included angle, we can substitute a equals to x and b equals to 6, c equals to 5, and the angle a equals to 71 degrees. Then we just solve this equation and we will get 6.44 cm as the unknown side x. In part 2, we can also apply the cosine rule because we have two given sides as well as the angle in between, the included angle. Hence, we can say that y squared is equal to 19 squared plus 23 squared minus 2 times 19 times 23 times cosine of 115 degrees. Calculating this, this will give us y equals to 35.5 meters. Moving on to checkpoint 2. In these two given triangles, find the unknown angles x degrees and y degrees. Pause the video here and give these two questions a good try. Now 
Now let's go through the answer for part 1. For this question, it might be easier to reframe the cosine rule as follows. But what is more important is to understand that the unknown angle x degrees is opposite the given side 7 cm. That is why when we make the substitution, 7 square is equal to a square plus c square minus 2 times ac cosine of the included angle x degrees. Notice that the x degrees is the included angle between the two given sides 5 cm and 9 cm. So when we finish the substitution, we will get 7 square equals to 9 square plus 5 square minus 2 times 9 times 5 cosine of x. Next, with some manipulation, we are able to get cosine x equals to 9 square plus 5 square minus 7 square divided by 2 times 9 times 5. Taking the inverse cosine function, we will get the unknown x degrees equals to 50.7 degrees. And now on to part 2. Notice that the unknown angle y is opposite the side 15 meters, and this unknown angle is between the two given sides 8 and 10 meters. So when we make the substitution, the opposite side 15 square is equal to the two adjacent side 8 square plus 10 square minus 2 times 8 times 10 times cosine of the included angle y. So making cosine y the subject, we can take the inverse cosine function to get the angle y to be 112.4 degrees. So now at this juncture, it's a good time to take a step back and review what we have learned about trigonometry thus far. In trigonometry, we can divide triangles into two types. Triangles are either right-angled or non-right-angled. When we are dealing with right-angled triangles, it's always easier to apply the Pythagoras theorem to find unknown lengths and to use the trigonometric ratios when you are given a reference angle or you intend to find a reference angle. When we are dealing with non-right-angled triangles, we will apply the cosine rule in two situations. When we have three given sides and we want to find an unknown angle, or if we have two sides and the included angle, and we want to find the length of the opposite side. The sine rule, on the other hand, is applied when we have a pair. The pair is when we know an angle and the length of the opposite side. That is when we apply the sine rule. And now is your time to practice. I will include a link to a worksheet in the info section below as well as the solution sheet for you to self-check your work when you are done with the worksheet. And now it's time to reflect on the success criteria that we have set at the start of this lesson. Are you now able to apply the cosine rule to find the unknown lengths and unknown angles of given triangles? And are you now clearer about how to and when to apply each rule? We have come to the end of part 5 on the cosine rule. Stay tuned for part 6 where we'll look at some applications of trigonometry, mainly the angles of elevation and depression as well as bearings. Until then, thank you and have a great day of learning.